It came as a surprise to me when I first learned that locusts are just grasshoppers. According to Wikipedia, there is no taxonomic distinction between the two. When the going gets good and populations boom, some grasshoppers become locusts, meaning they move together as one entity, eating everything they see like a giant grasshopper zombie horde. There may not be any locusts or grasshoppers in this build today, but I will be applying the locust mindset to another legendary animal. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. We're back in the Wild West this week with a frontier fort under attack from a swarm of bloodthirsty jackalopes. Obviously. To begin this build, after I had picked out my base, I grabbed some wooden half-inch dowels, I measured them out to a height that felt right, I taped a few of them together, and then I took them off camera and I cut them on my bandsaw. When I came back to the table, I had a bunch of shorter dowels, and I'd dry fit them on the base to see how much space I had to work with. I then tapered the end of each log to a point, and I did one by hand, but that took too long. So I did the rest off camera on my bandsaw, and then I cleaned it up by hand after that. I then glued all the logs together into two wall sections made from six logs each. I wanted to have a gate between the two wall sections, so I spaced them out with a nice long beam that I cut to length, and then I glued all three of those pieces together. I then took a sheet of balsa to act as the door. I cut it to the size of the door, and I sliced it in half. I added some other details like cross beams and panel lines, and then I glued them back together with a slight gap in the middle to look like double doors. Before gluing the gate to the wall, I used an X-Acto knife and a wire brush to scrape the logs and give them a little bit more character. This is something I should have done earlier. I made the wall walk slightly deeper to create more walking room for the soldiers on the wall, and that was the main structure of the wall done. Perfect height for a zombie rabbit invasion. I had some little spiked barriers from an IMEX set that I wanted to add to this build, so I assembled those, but before I could glue them in place, it was time to add some terrain paste. I wanted to add some height on either side to create a nice path to the gate. I wanted to experiment with something new this week, so I decided to mix paper mache that I found at the store into my plaster mix just to see what would happen, and also to see if it would be a helpful material to keep on hand. I mixed up about one part paper mache to one part plaster by volume, and I blended the dry ingredients before adding the water. In the end, the consistency was very similar to sculpt mold. In fact, now that I think about it, it's basically just sculpt mold. But the one issue that I did find with it was dry time. Both my usual plaster mix and sculpt mold dry much quicker than this paper mache mix, which took about an extra day to dry. I may just need to use less water or less of the mix, uh, but I like how it turned out and I'm not done experimenting. I had pressed the barricades into the wet terrain paste and once that was mostly dry, I began making additions to the wall. I cut up more of those barricades and I used them as spikes to line the wall. Spikes are a must have on a fortress in this wild imaginary west. I then added a ladder made of some plastic mesh and an antenna on the far end of the wall. Originally I was planning on doing way more with the wall, but I ran out of time this week and I figured that I could leave the wall pretty minimal as most of the technology would be on the structures inside the wall as opposed to on the wall itself. Off camera, my 3D printer was working to make these mythical little rabbits. I made them in a few different sizes and poses. I also printed one nice big one, which we're going to call the Titan Jackalope. I did some digital kit bashing between a couple files to get these jackalopes. I'll put a link to all of the files that I used in the description. To fight off all these crazed jackrabbits, I also picked out some IMEX Civil War minis. They're all on the same team in this diorama. I then used some double sided tape and stuck all the jackalopes down to a priming board which took me way too long because there are way too many rabbits. And then I took all of them and the soldiers outside to prime. In addition to the miniatures, I also took the base outside to prime. I gave everything a zenithal highlight which means I painted it black first and then sprayed on white from above. I broke out the airbrush and I started with the little jackalopes. I gave them a few different colors from various angles in order to achieve more variety in their coloration. 
just like we see in nature. While jackalopes are usually herbivores, when they enter locust mode, pretty much all food becomes fair game. The titan jackalope got similar colors to the small ones, but painted on with a little bit more intention. This giant jackalope is not in locust mode like the rest of his little friends. Most of the largest animals of the Wild West are rather stoic and uninvolved unless provoked. That being said, this jackalope has an affinity towards its kind, meaning all the other jackalopes, and is getting ready to knock down the gate to let all the others in. He's not doing it to be mean to the humans and he doesn't want them to take it personally. He's just being a pal to all his little friends. After I had finished painting this adorable little rabbit with antlers, it was time to paint the base. This fort in Wyoming was built to house a trading post as well as be protection from the local wildlife. It is equipped with measures to keep animals away, but unfortunately when the jackalopes enter their gregarious phase, they don't really listen to reason, and a forestall will just send them deeper into goblin mode, which is why they have no problem swarming and attacking this fortress. After the painting was done, I added some static grass. Once I had spread out the static tack, I turned on the static grass applicator, I sprinkled it all in place, and then I vacuumed up all of the excess with a vacuum and a sock. I finished adding some color and texture to the base, and then I sealed it all with watered down white glue and isopropyl alcohol. While I paint the soldiers, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons. These soldiers know that while crazed jackalope swarms are super dangerous, they usually wouldn't be an issue, as the little jackalopes can't break through the wall or jump high enough to reach the top. They also don't tunnel due to their antlers, but the fact that the big rabbit is about to ram the gate definitely saps some of the confidence from these guys. After all of the painting was done, it was time to glue the figures in place. The last thing to do was to paint the sides of the diorama black, and I called it good. This build was my submission for the May art challenge that I put on for my patrons. The theme voted on was Frontier Forts. Please take a moment to appreciate all of their submissions. A few of them have accompanying videos, which I'll link below. You should definitely go check those out. Thanks again to all the patrons who participated last month. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.